Hey guys, welcome back to Ari the Stag. TR Tony here, sat on the drive just doing a few engine tests this morning, make sure the uh, whole cooling is working. Welcome back and a very happy Easter to you all. It's the Easter bank holiday in the UK, so uh, kind of sunny, uh, kind of dry, so uh, allows us to get out and about in the cars too, which is uh, really great. I know many of you are. And uh, so this week I thought it'd be a little bit different. I thought I'd feature one of our owner's cars who's just appeared on the Facebook group uh, this week with his latest acquisition. He's had a stag for a little while before, but I chose to sell it and then has bought another one. So I'll show you that in just a second. Um, then I'm going to show you something that um, I had to do as a result of a bit of a disaster last weekend where we ran out of water, didn't quite boil over, but was pretty close to it. I managed to rescue my stag and uh, I had to repair it and I'll talk you about that in just a second. And then at the very end, we've got um, one of our other drivers who sent in a video uh, driving off into the sunset, which is uh, great to share. So I'll, I'll share all that with you very shortly. First of all though, um, just th like to present Anthony Monaghan's uh, car who uh, he put some photographs up on the Facebook group this week and it's really really great. If you want to have a quick look at what he's done. Um, he previously had a, a green, uh, emerald green car it's a, it, and this car is a new possession. He collected it on Monday and, and drove home 60 miles of course with the roof down as he says and he bought it off the previous owner who'd um, actually done a full body uh, internal and external rebuild and refit so the car was very very uh, good condition and um, of course absolutely he's very pleased with it indeed and it's a replacement for his old emerald green one that he sold last year and of course Anthony has affixed his Ari the Stag badge of honour on his windscreen to boot so uh, that looks looks really really good and uh, thank you for that Anthony now proudly displaying the uh, Ari the Stag badge and uh, sharing the classics dream with your new car, which is brilliant. If you want one, guys, uh, free of charge, just feel free to click on the link, uh, go onto the website, order one, and we'll send you one free of charge anywhere you like in the world. It's uh, all part of being part of the Ari Stag uh, community, which is really good. Good, okay, well, as I mentioned at the start, we had a, a few issues last week. As you remember, a couple of videos back, I've been replacing the torque control uh, fan unit on the front of the engine. That all went well in the end. Um, we went out for a test drive, as you do, uh, and actually with Lady Throop herself and uh, Promise of Lunch over at Hengisbury Head near Christchurch. And uh, on the way back, uh, we sadly uh, got a little bit hot on the thermometer on the stag and it actually ran out of water. Uh, I managed to rescue it as I mentioned at the front end um, but clearly there was an issue and what happened was the car had uh, not had its gasket fitted properly in the thermostat housing. So uh, that was uh, TR Tony's fault I'm afraid and uh, I wasn't very popular as I'm sure you can imagine. However we did manage to get it home. Let me just tell you the story. I'll show you what I did because there's some elements in there I think will be useful for others thinking about replacing gaskets that kind of thing on the uh, thermostat coupling and actually in any other kind of application too. So uh, some principles here that may help. Let's go over and have a look at the workshop. Right, this is a post-disaster um, that happened yesterday um, with the stag. We went out for um, lunch and then came back and we overheated simply because the um, thermostat housing was leaking and the water was squeezing out between the plates, between the, the front of the um, head and the, or the block rather, and the flange of this of thermostat housing. So what I've done... I've grabbed the uh, the gasket that was there. I suspect I might have actually misaligned it slightly. You can just see there it might have been slightly out of kilter when I nipped it up before, leading to water being allowed out between the joins. Um, this obviously was a new one gasket at some point, but uh, not fairly recently, I don't think. So what I've done is I've grabbed some gasket material out of the garage. I've got a great big roll of it up here somewhere. Where is it? up here so it's almost like really thick cardboard special gasket material and I've cut out the shape of that on the gasket material itself and now what I'm going to do is cut it out and replace it all nice and tight with some decent gasket material and some gasket sealant hopefully to then seal the pressurised system such that we don't um, lose lots of water and upset the missus again, which um, she wasn't very happy yesterday, I have to say. Uh, but anyway, we managed to rescue it with a very kind man next to us in a white van who just happened to have a 13mm spanner to be able to tighten up the nuts 
and bolt back on the bolts that were on here just enough to get more clamping force here to at least minimize some of the water that was being lost enough for us to be able to fill up with water and get us home the last two or three miles so uh, all part of uh, 1970s car ownership isn't it but uh, there we go so i'm going to cut this now and see what we end up with i'll be back to you shortly with the uh, results and um, luckily i managed to have found a nice little saw in my drill set which isn't far off the diameter of the hole there so i'm going to use that to cut through uh, having clamped a piece of scrap wood before anybody asks don't want to have to drill through the uh, brand new workbench and upset harry who built all this that would not go down well. Harry the stag. Okay, here we go. We've got the uh, drill bit. I'm doing this single-handedly, so I might need to um, drop everything off. Clamp it to the workbench. It might spin off, so I'm just going to do it gently, single-handedly. Otherwise, I'll have two hands on this, but for the camera. Ooh, whoops. I'm going to have to use both hands. <laughs> Okay, well it kind of worked. Um, <laughs> rather overzealously uh, took the uh, gasket material out, which is fine, but uh, good job we put some scrap wood on here because we've also taken out the scrap wood underneath. But um, at least we've got a decent looking gasket. I can trim it up in a minute. Now, need now to drill the two holes for the, um, the bolts and then we should be there, fingers crossed. And actually doesn't look too far short of where it should have been. So quite pleased with that. Good job we had scrap wood, like I said. And I've just swapped this over for a, um, I think this is a wood drill bit. As you can see, it's got a little pin in the end. So get that pin on the centre of the mark you want to make, which was just there. And then hopefully that'll just guide us through. Again, it's a little bit shorter than it should be. But uh, we'll just, just gently drill through. Again, we're through there. That's fine. And then this one, just I've made some marks off camera just to guide it. It's only a couple of mil thick this stuff it's pretty straightforward but there we are. And again into the the wood below so i can now tidy that up see what we can do and as you can see i've just cut around it with a, a little craft knife just to be absolutely sure so i'm taking off bits of it so i think you can begin to see the shape of the gasket starting to form up and i uh, just got to do this bit now and make sure the radiuses are right I will carry on. Now, as you can see here, <coughs> this is the um, original gasket. I'm very tempted to actually put both of them back in because that's going to make quite a thick gasket then between obviously what is quite a pressurised seal. Um, I think you can see this is the one I've been crafting here. And all I'm doing is superimposing this one over the other one, aligning it nicely, and then going with a pencil just around to show up any areas that aren't quite there. And you can see there I've made a mark just in here and then taking that off and then slowly but surely just slicing it with this craft knife so I'm, I'm getting actually the right shape so uh, that's beginning to look good I'm not too worried about the exterior what the exterior actually looks like as long as it fits and the bolts can go through then that's going to make a nice really thick heavy duty gasket with some mass uh, mastic on there as well gasket sealant I think jobs are good and we shall see <laughs> Okay, so this is the original, as I've just said. What I'm doing now, I've, I'm pretty happy with that hole there. That's the right shape for the, um, the water to go through. Um, I'm not too sure about the hole size. I've drilled it, as you can see. What I'm now using is a little file just to run it through and just open it up a little bit, such that the bolts, when they come to it, will actually go through these holes, being careful not to damage the outside. So I think you can see there, that's the beginning. To look a lot more like what it should so reasonably happy i'm going to go back to the car shortly and offer it up see if it fits and get it back together um, and that can fit over there obviously so a nice really thick looking gasket you can see the width of that there that's quite a width so hopefully that'll really seal it and keep my other half happy when we take her out for meals <laughs> and day trips hey love <laughs> good stuff Okay, so I've just put the thermostat in there now, and you can just see that resting glued almost in with that mastic material, with the whole air hole at the top there, allowing freedom of movement of air. So there's not gonna be any air locks in the heater matrix inside 
so that will allow it to burp through which is good so now I can put the body on uh, with the gaskets over the top here so effectively we've ended up with a gasket sandwich we've got two real thick gaskets there as you can see with mastic in between nothing too much but um, hopefully that will now nip up nice and tight and seal the problem fingers crossed So I've disconnected the pipe because I thought it would be easier to mount on here. So I'm just going to get the uh, screwdriver, out, pardon the spanner out and um, offer it up and get it in. Okay, so we've got it squished in there. So fingers crossed that's good enough. All right, all plumbed back in. Um, obviously got to put the uh, air cleaner box on top not lean on it which isn't very good uh, although it may not be the prettiest finish uh, let's hope that it does the job and holds it um, and obviously got to refill now as it was fairly out of water following my rather rushed trip home the other day so I've got to fill that up and um, then right up to temperature see if it all works I'll let you know all right well uh, We've got it up to temperature now and um, all appears to be well. So that's been running now for about 15 minutes. As you can see there, the temperature gauge is actually quite good, fairly low. Um, having cleaned out all the block and the rad, and um, I had an email at the weekend that said that that radiator fan, because it's so close on this car, um, actually it does cool it very, very efficiently. So the uh, torque control unit I installed at the weekend is going okay and uh, would appear to be on the temp even with a bit of a rev, I've been revving it a bit as well. Nothing will replace a uh, road test obviously but uh, I think you can see that's a pretty good temperature reading and um, yeah happy with that job. I guess the acid test as we said before will be to take it out on the road and see what actually happens in the real world, only this time I won't take the missus in case there's a problem. <laughs> All right guys, so I hope that was uh, useful for you. Just uh, some little tips on how to make a gasket. I'm not the uh, perfect engineer, but um, it is working in the car that I'm sitting in right now. We have been for a few little trips around the block, so uh, so far so good. So uh, all good news. Um, so that's about it for this week guys. Thanks for watching, uh, very kind and uh, feel free to like, share and subscribe as we always say. Uh, we'll play out this week with uh, Scott Franklin Lester's video. He sent in this video during the week and instantly if you've got any videos of your car that you'd like to send in please do. You may well get a feature on the channel and uh, Scott sent this in during the week and I thought it'd be nice to play out and listen to that fantastic V8 burble that we all love uh, to hear. It is really a gorgeous sound and uh, Scott's car is no different. So well done Scott, thanks for sending that in. Uh, we'll be sending you one or two little things in the post just to say thank you. Uh, meanwhile, have a great week everybody, have a great Easter and we'll see you online on Ari the Stag very soon. All the best, cheers for now, bye. <laughs>